Daytona, a track with 65 years and counting of history behind it, located where stock car racing was born, where once upon a time it all started right on the beach. Now, in one of the greatest and grandest racing venues in the world. For me, I got to experience this for the first time and I learned throughout the week that you just have to take it all in. There is no other place, no other atmosphere like Daytona. This one in particular was special and a lot of hype was being led into it. Not just about the Daytona 500, but how this weekend will make dreams come true of the many up and coming drivers as they approach Daytona and take to the track for the first time. It's mom and pop special, this is. Yeah. We have over uh, 45 companies and organizations and over 200 uh, individual contributions. So that's good. Pretty neat. Yeah, that's so, awesome. It took a, it took a village to, to raise a child, as I like to say. <laughs> Such as Brayton Laster, carrying his mom and pop special and the names that carried on his car thanks to fan donations through Drive for Humanity and the small businesses he represented on his number 03 Ford Mustang. For each and every driver, team, and fan, there's a story to be told. Brayton's is just one of them. And it's not just the young rising stars that will have their own dreams come true. As a driver, they tell us so special because there's so much sensory input, so many things to pay attention to, so a lot of overwhelming information like a rookie or something driving without mm -hmm. your first time. There's also longtime veteran Eric Caudell, who has a love and passion for the sport and still invests into it with his own race team. The point is, there is a story for everyone that comes to Daytona, from drivers to teams to fans even. The world center of speed, the history, uh, the racing that goes on here, it's unlike any place else, the drafting, uh, the action never stops throughout the field. been coming here for decades or like myself coming here for the first time there is so much to take in at the 2.5 mile circuit there's a major reason that people from all over the world come to an event such as the daytona 500 well, because there's nowhere else quite like it in the world i mean anywhere in the world not just the u.s but you've got such a big it's a big track it's the style of racing is so different and then you've got the, the fans and the people who come out here it's what really makes this into it's more than an event it's more than a race it's an event yeah what he said obviously he put it very well uh, also it's great ourselves coming from european nascar to have the the bond strengthened here and uh, yeah to see this this huge event all the all the fans uh, it's all on a bigger scale and yeah, it's just great to soak in the atmosphere and I really do mean all over the world. I met Gordon Barnes and Chris Lehman from the NASCAR Euro Series team Marco Stipp Motorsports, who were there to watch one of their teammates take to Daytona for the first time, a driver from Portugal named Miguel Gomez. For driver's dreams coming true, one example came out of Greg Van Alst, a Midwest short track racer who ran an ARCA just a few times in the early 2000s and then went to other forms of racing over the next 20 years. He then came back to ARCA in 2021 and now has a win at Daytona to his name. This is just one of the many examples of dreams that come true at Daytona. Now, just as much as drivers' dreams come true this weekend, so do the fans. Whether it's your first race ever or their first time at Daytona, despite being in other tracks. You know, I just think yeah. the history yeah. here, the uh, yeah. first yeah. place that, that yeah. just seeping the tradition, yeah. uh, it's dripping with it. And you come down 
out here and you know that it's going to be something else that we have never seen before. Like, whether it's somebody winning for another time or somebody winning for the first time, the way they win it. Like, you know, even walking in the garage this morning, you're talking to NASCAR people. They can, they were talking, we could set up the biggest event, we could set up everything to go, and we have no idea what's going to happen. Like, so we'll just, everybody just does their best, and it's totally unpredictable. And I think that anticipation that everybody's going to experience something, everybody's going to see something that nobody knows, and it's anybody's guess, and it's, it's really what it is. And, um, you know, just the, the magnitude of this, the prestige of it, people all over the world watching, uh, just feels feels important. Um, enjoy it. Um, I think that the thing for a lot of fans is you, if you don't know cars and drivers, pick a couple of cars, watch them throughout the day, see how they go forward, how they go back, how they're having it gives you something that you can focus on in the race. It doesn't matter whether it's who you picked, which car, just just start building a fan, you know, start following somebody. Right. But it's not the biggest race of the year. Yeah. The 500 is always the biggest race of the year, at least for stock car racing. When I first walked into the infield of Daytona International Speedway, I was truly blown away just how massive the place is. Seeing all the park campers and RVs just made it feel like you were in a small city or more so at a festival that was happening while the race was going on. It was truly something to behold. It wasn't like many other racing venues. Oh my god, I'm actually here. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> this is it, man. This is Daytona. This is Daytona. There is a lot to experience. It's not just showing up for a car race. It's showing up for an experience, too. This here is the NASCAR fan experience. Highly recommend if you're new to NASCAR that you come here and check something like this out. Because... This is what makes this races right great, is, is the left, all the activation, step. all the, the fan experience you can step. check out down here. Just it's unlike any other sport, honestly. It's so where a lot of people can come together. And uh, especially for those of you who are parents and have little ones who are perhaps getting into the sport, just like uh, I was about 20 years ago. So, yeah, this is... Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Me and my dad were always making sure we got to races early because of that. And here's a prime example. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Have a great day. You too. Prime example. Sometimes you can get free food and free drinks out of it. Yeah. Honestly, you can save quite a bit of money if you just know where to go. Exactly. Yesterday uh, in the infield, Daytona had a Wendy's activation zone, and uh, they were giving out literally free lunches. Free burgers and uh, with fries and uh, uh I think it was a frosty, and it was really good, so, yeah, so, hey, that's just part of it, so it makes, it's part of what makes racing great, it's just coming down here and just getting to experience all this, it's not just, oh, you're showing up for a car race, you're showing up for the atmosphere, you're showing up for so many different things, absolutely. There's so much to do at a NASCAR race. Well, really, not just NASCAR, but any motorsport race. IMSA, IndyCar, whatever it may be, there's so much to experience. For example, as I mentioned, the NASCAR experience was one of the many activations set up outside the facility for fans to enjoy before the race. Many of these are from different companies, sponsors, and even the manufacturers of the sport that include driver appearances. For example, the NASCAR experience actually had Travis Pastrana come on leading up to the Daytona 500 that day. 
It's a great way to have fans interested in the sport through a company they could associate themselves with or driver that they can easily connect to. I think the best way to experience it is to sort of, uh, you know, take take a little time to evaluate the driver's personalities, watch some in interviews, and find somebody that you relate to. Like maybe you're a brash, outspoken person, and you'll like a driver that's brash and outspoken. Maybe you like to go party, and you'll find a driver that likes to go party. Maybe you're like kind of chill and mellow, and you like people who are more classy or whatever. So you can find a driver that you identify with, and then if you can get invested in them. Uh, it would help if they could win every once in a while, probably too. Then you have the build-up and the anticipation of the race. This included a pre-race concert from Dirk Bentley right there in the infield and even a Thunderbird flyover. Every single moment leading up to it contributes to what makes this event so special. Then, there's the big race, as 40 drivers strap into their cars and begin a 200 lap, 500 mile journey. All as 100,000 plus fans watch on, as well as the millions watching around the world. The laps tick away, as the lead changes and one driver could make a single move that could make or break their day. race gets near its end, and every year that I've watched the Daytona 500 growing up, my heart begins to pound faster in the closing laps, and this was no exception being there live. On the final restart, you had Ricky Stenhouse Jr. trying to snap an almost 200 race winless streak, and then you had defending NASCAR Cup Series champion Joey Logano, who was also in the mix. This is where everything comes down to it. All the preparations, all the hard work, all of the testing. This is really it. Time to see whose life could change forever by winning the Daytona 500. Sometimes in racing, you'll have storybook moments. This was certainly one of them. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., a 35-year-old veteran from Olive Branch, Mississippi, who since his rookie season in 2013 has won two cup races. He drives for a small team called JTG Daughtery Racing, a team owned by a married couple and former NBA All-Star Brad Daughtery with longtime sponsor Kroger capturing the biggest win of them all. The team has ran in the Cup Series since the late 2000s and earned their second win ever. 
but certainly one that every member of that team from the driver to the crew and everyone employed will now remember for the rest of their lives. They are now part of immortality. They have forever etched their name in the record books at Daytona. And this is one of the many moments that makes motorsports so special. You have all these different personalities, whether it's a Braden Laster, whether it's a Michael Klein, whether it is a Cody Ware, yeah. Chase Elliott, Kevin Harvick, and they all mesh in one way or another. The fan friendliness of it, how close you can get to the drivers, and So the other thing that makes motor racing, motor sports different from other sports, is not just a, a personal physical endeavour, there's a team and there's the engineering aspect. Mm. So it's not just making yourself better, you've got to make the car faster. And that's understanding how it's set up, how springs work, shots work and so on. Motor sports is just, you know, people are pushing themselves to the limit and their machines to the limit. And sometimes, you know, you go over the line, love the line, something bad happens. And, and that's the danger of it. But they all know that it's dangerous and they're all pushing as hard as they can. They're putting their lives on the line and they still do it. Um, they're still trying to compete as hard as they can. Um, so it's that balance between, you know, bravery, skill, talent, um, taking a chance, and backing it down and controlling yourself. Um, and only if you, everybody thinks they can do it, but only if you actually can. And to be able to see those people display their skills, I think that's pretty, pretty magical. You know, just basically, like legends from all, from, from, you know, from, from all decades of the, of the sport that are, that are here this week, this weekend with us. So, you know, everybody, everybody's treating each other like family, which, uh, which, I'm, which I'm very pleased about. So, but other than that, I mean, uh, yeah, I've never, this, is, this is my first time in Daytona, and this is just, uh, just an unbelievable experience so far. This was certainly one of the greatest experiences that I've ever had. Uh, honestly, just even a couple days after coming back from Florida, I'm still trying to process everything that I got to experience. It was a massive whirlwind of activities. I couldn't be any more thankful. And this really, this trip, this trip to the Daytona 500 really has influenced me and really helped me out to why I love motorsports and I love everything about motorsports. I love the speed, the action, everything that goes into it for someone to succeed. There's so much that goes into it and it, it's inspiring me to show this kind of content. That's why I was big on Speed Reign Supreme and this is part of it. This I hope will help show to anyone really. Even if they're a new racing fan or they wanna get into it, I hope this video will help somebody and just showcase to them, wow, this is amazing. And this is just one race out of all sorts of races that are ran throughout the world. But I will say with the Daytona 500, there's not many other races quite like the Daytona 500. And I would highly encourage to anyone in general, even if you're not a racing fan, just to get down there once to experience it all. It, it's totally worth it. You know, we had a 15 hour car ride down there and I can tell you right now, it was worth it. Everything was worth it and it just once again reminded me how much I love racing. And I hope for those who went, it felt the same way for them too. This was my experience and the experience for many other people 
in this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.